time, I'd like to remember those that can't be here. Some that are, dear God's taken them from us. People that can't be here for different reasons, and they know their reasons. They've missed something by not being here. But we are so proud to be here. So I ask you, please, to raise your glasses in a toast to absent friends. Absent friends. I'm Cynthia Magna, and uh, I began school in 1940. Of course, the war was on then, and Mr. Hofstick was very keen on, very patriotic, and uh, very keen on um, helping us should New Zealand be invaded. So we had all these trenches dug at the back of the school. And, uh, some of, them, some of you might remember that from time to time we had an air raid warning and we'd all have to rush out and crouch in these trenches, whether it had been raining or not. <laughs> and, <laughs> we had quite a lot of fun doing this, of course, but we did have nightmares sometimes about the invasion of Te Kaua and sold, enemy soldiers running around behind the gum trees and we were trying to escape them. <laughs> But, um, so I spent my last two years at Tukofai, and then my son spent all his years at Tukofai, bar the last two years, and went up to Auckland. Um, <coughs> while I was at school, my brother was four years younger than me, and my parents joined the PTA, and they were friends with the Gertzes and the Singletons, and just from that friendship, 25 years later, once a month, every month, they still get together. So that's all come from a bond of Tukorwai. So I was Laurel Smith. Um, we grew up in the house straight across the road from the school that uh, the Cassies built and Mum and Dad bought the house off the Reardons. Um, I don't have any particular funny stories but like little snippets like I remember buying four cent ice blocks from Averill and Jim at Beth at the store, or the shop we called it. I remember the, the key to the memorial hall was in our mailbox for I don't know how many years. Years and years and years. And, uh, I remember those. And sand saucers. I was saying to someone tonight, sand saucers at Calf Club Day. And we had very strict instructions from Mrs Taylor and Mrs Shreber that there wasn't allowed to be any sand showing. You had to cover absolutely all the sand. Um, I remember graduating from pencil to biro pen in Mrs. Taylor's class, and that was such an honour to be, you know, one of the kids that could now write in pen. And I was also talking today about remembering Mrs. Taylor um, putting red biro dots on people's noses and calling them sticky beak if they were being nosy. <laughs> so she wouldn't have probably got away with that now. Hiya, um, I'm Stacey Johansson, one of the younger members here tonight. I was at uh, Te Kofi Primary from 91 to 96. I have now moved on and I am now a teacher myself at Hamilton West, so I obviously um, had some good inspiration at Te Kofi, particularly Mrs. Edmonds, Mrs. Shreva, and Mrs. Um, Whaley as well. <laughs> I remember when they built the big wooden uh, playground out the back, and that was huge because we didn't really have much of a playground then, and then they built that. And for me, that was, I, I learned it bit by bit. I first of all had to learn how to balance along the big poles to get up to the first platform. And then I think there was a wire that you had to balance along as well. And then the final bit, this is the rope swing. That took me a while to master that. That was very scary. But I think I did end up doing it by the time I left the school. So a few memories, happy memories, as, as have been mentioned tonight. And um, yeah. Thank you for those memories. Yeah. The ashes out of the potbelly stones. Um, none of you remember doing that? I was sitting, some of them down there remember doing that. It was a duty that the senior boys always took turns in. I was sitting in the car park waiting for Claire to take her to music lessons at 10 to 3. And the two certain boys came out, having gone round all the classrooms and emptied the ashes into a bucket, probably about a bigger than a 20 litre bucket, 
It was quite a big bucket. And they carried a broom handle between them with the, 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 um, the bucket between, in the middle so they didn't get near the hot ashes. They went down and we, they used to go and dump them down in the gully. These two boys, <coughs> while I was sitting there watching from the car park, came along and went to the climbing frame that some people will remember that had rope stretched probably eight feet high or so. And they got to the climbing frame and I thought, what are they going to do? And then they started climbing, carrying the bucket of hot ashes between them, over the top of the climbing frame and down the other side very carefully. And I just watched and thought, well, they're going to spot them in a minute. But no, they managed to get right across and then they continued down to empty the ashes. I don't know if it was a regular habit, but I just sat there and I thought it was about the funniest thing that I'd ever seen.